everyone and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 238. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and if you're a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing yarn, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York where I'm from and I live with my husband Dennis and our adorable cat Bella and as always I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your busy day to chat about all those things with me and yes I'm going to pop on the screen really quickly where you can follow me on the interwebs. Uh, as always, I'm most active on Instagram and Ravelry. I'm Vine there and pretty much everywhere on the web. And uh, the best way, the best, best, best possible way to get in touch with me is uh, via email. And that is contact at VolenVineYarns.com uh, for a quick and speedy response uh, and the like. So welcome to the show. Uh, if you tuned in last week uh, and are, you're a normal follower of the podcast, uh, by the way, thank you. Um, you might have noticed that I was testing out a new camera lens and it was kind of making the background all blurry. I was a little bit of, I was too close to the camera and the autofocus was just going all crazy like. And uh, yeah, I, I was just experimenting and I learned that, well, some of you liked it and then some of you didn't. Uh, thank you so much for your feedback, first of all. Uh, but yeah, I am reverting back to my normal mode of recording the podcast this week and going forward because I like this setup so much better. It's quick to set up, it's quick to break down. So when it comes to recording a podcast, this is my choice for recording a podcast. It just makes the whole process a lot more streamlined and I love the quality and everything. So in case you are in the market for a podcasting or vlogging camera, I highly recommend the Canon G7X. Uh, the camera that I was using last week, in case you're curious, uh, I was using my Canon DSLR, my, my big, Canon Rebel uh, with a 30 millimeter lens. And uh, while the quality I was, some of you described it as professional looking and I agree, but for knitting podcast uh, needs, my knitting podcast needs, uh, this is better suited, I think. Uh, it was just way too much of, it was way more of a production than I had anticipated. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the podcast because I have lots to talk about uh, with you guys. Uh, but first, uh, my one announcement this week is just to remind you guys that I have a trunk show coming up at Do You Knit in Westfield, New Jersey on Saturday, June 24th. Uh, I will be there at 10 a.m. and we'll see how long I stay there but you know normally I love hanging out uh, getting to meet you guys in person and uh, it always means so much to me when you make a trip out uh, to my trunk shows uh, it's just you know I love putting especially like if I've been conversing with you or have chatted with you on Instagram or Ravelry I love putting names to face names to faces and uh, it's, it's always a blast at DUNIT so if you have the opportunity I hope you can make it out to DUNIT because it's a wonderful awesome awesomely awesome uh, local yarn shop in New Jersey Karen K Paws I love you and I cannot wait to hang out with you again so yay um, and I'm super hyper this morning. I've had coffee. I dyed yarn this morning. Uh, I, I will admit I did sit down to record a podcast this morning because um, Dennis, I woke up early actually, did my show notes and everything and uh, I sat down to record a podcast. Dennis was actually home this morning. He is taking an exam today so he slept in and I was hoping to get a, a podcast recorded before he woke up but long story short he woke up and then I am a freak. I cannot record a podcast while he or anyone else is around unless, you know, La my friend Laura, we've done a podcast together. Uh, Laura from Jinx Yarns. Sometimes she comes to visit and we do a podcast together. That's the only ex only um, exception because I know she podcasts and she gets it. But Dennis, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I just get so nervous when someone else is around. Um, I cannot... I cannot podcast. I don't know. So I decided to hold off, get some dying done this morning. Um, he left. He's off taking his again. His blah, blah, he's off taking his exam. So I'm now recording. And yay! So anyway, I am babbling and rambling as always. Uh, let's get into what's off my needles this week. Okie dokes. So if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw me post about this, but. I finished my apple blossom socks. They're done. Finito. Done. Done. Off the needles. I was not expecting this. I will be totally honest. Um, I thought that these would be kind of languishing on my needles for a while, a couple more weeks maybe. Um, I will be totally honest. When I knit pattern socks, it takes me just a smidge longer. They take me a smidge longer to complete than normal vanilla basic plain socks uh, because yeah, I have to pay a little bit more attention to what I'm uh, what I'm knitting and uh, yeah, it's a second sock, a mild case of second sock syndrome 
sneaks in there somewhere. I'm like, oh, I gotta knit. But the fact that I knit these concurrently definitely helped. Um, but the, well, let me, let me talk about the pattern and the yarn. Beautiful pattern by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade Designs. And the yarn is Nora George in her thistle colorway, which was dyed uh, specifically for the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which I attended this year and had the wonderful opportunity to actually meet up with Helen from Curious Handmaids, Handmade Designs and, and Tracy of Nora George Yarns. And Tracy so kindly gifted me a skein of her thistle colorway, that, which she dyed specifically, as I mentioned, for the for the event. And um, thank you so much, so much, Tracy. This, this was such a beautiful, colorway to work with and I love the effect. I love how it works exactly with um, with the apple blossom socks. And yeah, there we go. Um, so these are my souvenir socks for Edinburgh um, because you know I had met H Helen Stewart for the first time and uh, Tracy, she gifted me the yarn and I just thought the two together were just, it was meant to be. I don't even know if I'm gonna be wear these. I don't think I will. I will just mount these on the wall and just always be reminded of Edinburgh, my, my time there. Um, I would love, 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 love to go next year. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I would love for it to be just like an annual adventure for me, like to just hop on a plane and go to Scotland because it was just so much fun. And yeah, souvenir socks, I love these. So yay, these are my third pair for my box of socks. So again, it's a year long knit along uh, that I'm hosting, which kicked off January 1st, 2017, is going all the way to January 1st, 2018. Uh, and it's such a fun knit along. Uh, lot, lots of you are super excited for it and have already knit way past 12 pairs of socks. Uh, the whole idea is to knit at least 12 pairs of socks store them in a box and have them ready to go, ready to wear in the new year. Um, but you can totally wear them before then. But you know, I, I just like, I love the idea of just having a fresh pair, a, a fresh box of socks to uh, dip into when the weather starts getting colder again. Uh, and yes, it is, it is summer. It is wonderful. I love this weather so much. <sighs> I have to get out today at some point because Anyway, I'm digressing on the weather, but um, yeah, this past week has just been so dreary, so rainy, and today is a really nice day. So I'm gonna get a walk in at some point today. But um, anyway, yes, I have a lot of energy today, guys. Um, I'm in rare form. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so join in the knit along. Uh, hop on over to the Yarngasm Ravelry group where you can partake in all of our knit alongs, uh, share your progress, chat, um, and it's just a really fun place to be. So check it out. Uh, yeah, so yay, apple blossom socks are done. Uh, and the reason, I should probably talk about why the reason these are unexpected, unexpectedly done is because Helen Stewart came to town last weekend. Uh, she's still in town. Well, she's at Squam right now, but she was in the city uh, last Sunday and uh, organized a meetup. And it was me, Jacqueline from Brooklyn Knit Folk, and Amina from uh, the Knitting Expat Podcast, and a couple of Helen's friends. And we all got together and just had a really nice Sunday morning of knitting and chatting. And it was so awesome to get to see Helen again, uh, this time in the city. And it, it's always, it's, it's a really surreal feeling or, you know, yeah, I want to say, you know, seeing somebody in one <laughs> part of the world and then seeing, meeting up with them again in another part of the world. So that's kind of how I felt with uh, Katie from Inside Number 23 when she came to New York for Vogue Knitting Live and then I got to see her again in Edinburgh for the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So it was, you know, it's, it's always, it's crazy how, I don't know, Ravelry and the internet bring knitters together from all parts of the world and then getting to see them in different parts of the world. It's, anyway, it, it gives me goosebumps, but um, yeah, I think it's so cool. Uh, but yeah, I decided to bring along my apple blossom socks. I figure if I'm gonna be hanging out with Helen, I might as well be working on one of her patterns and put a, putting a significant dent in it. And lo and behold, we were chatting and having such a great time. Before I knew it, it was time for me to decrease the toes on both of my socks because I'm knitting them concurrently, or I was knitting them concurrently. So yeah, knitters are the best. They, they help you get stuff done. So, um, yay. Um, yeah, so yay, done socks. Uh, I'm gonna move along to what's on my needle still. So I know this week I promised you I would have a finished shawl design to share with you, but uh, unfortunately I'm still working on it. 
as I mentioned, it is huge, uh, and I'm still working out a couple of kinks, so I will postpone that until next week. So stay tuned, uh, but I'm so happy to hear that a lot of you are excited for the pattern. Um, I'm excited to finish it, and I hope you guys are gonna like it. I am very, very, very excited about it, and yeah, anyway, but more details to come, I promise, soon, 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 soon. Uh, but in the meantime, I have been getting some work done on my eyeball shawl, which is a pattern, of course, by Stephen West, or West Knits, and you guys, I finished Scalera part one. Sorry, sclera part one. Uh, and I can't really spread it out because it's still all on one needle, but I finished, um, yeah, one half of the, the eye white. The sclera is is the eye, the white of the eye, in case you're curious. The scientific term, because science, science is awesome. Um, so yeah, here's, here's the eye. Um, we have the, the pupil, as I mentioned every week. It's uh, Skinny Dipping Yarns in her Space Pants colorway. Skinny Dipping Yarn again for the iris in her olives colorway, and then La Bienne Aimée for the Sclera, white of the eye. And you can see it so much better on this camera. Uh, yeah, and this is her Gateway Purple colorway on her singles base. And I've been alterna alternating between two separate skeins, so just to make sure that my... Um, Make sure that my that uh, the colors are even, colors and uh, speckles are evenly distributed uh, because yes, when dealing with uh, hand dyed yarn, it's always best to uh, always a good idea to alternate between two skeins just to make sure your colorways, um, the dye lots are spread out evenly if that makes any sense. Uh, and I, I had actually received a couple of questions um, as far as alternating skeins in a knitting project uh, when working with hand dyed yarn. So uh, the way I do it is if I'm working with two separate dye lots and they are visibly not similar I will always uh, alternate skeins every every right at least every right side row or every other right, uh, right side row um, and I just carry the yarn up the side uh, when I do the change um, but if you are working with you know hand dyed yarn that is either from the same dye lot or uh, different dye lots but they look very similar you can probably get away with every third right side row or every fourth right side row uh so yeah i'm working on the second part of the white white of the eye if i can let me see there we go so no not a huge significant amount of progress on it but it's it's going it's going so there's where i am um, and I, I really love this project. It's just so simple and intuitive. Um, it starts out as a uh, like a pie shawl, and then you just work the the whites of the eyes outward, and it's like as if you're knitting two triangular shawls on either side of the circle or the pie shawl. It's it's so ingenious, and it's a lot simpler than it it seems. So highly recommend the pattern if you're looking for a super fun, super intuitive knit. Um, and this is being entered into the Keep Knitting Kitten Cal. Yay! Uh, which I found out I have I have until July 1st to finish, so I think I can do it, you guys. Uh, the Keep Knitting Kitten Cal is being hosted by Hannah of the Corner of Craft Podcast. I have no idea what that was. It sounds like a hovercraft, but yeah, came down my street. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm sorry. The Keep Knitting Kitten Cal is being hosted by Hannah of the Corner of Craft podcast and Becky of the Stringing It Together podcast, which I am so sorry, Becky, last time I mentioned the podcast, the, uh, the Knit Along, I called you the Stitching in High Notes podcast. I'm so sorry. That is another podcast hosted by, I believe, Opera Joe. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that, but um, another wonderful podcast you should check out. Uh, but no, no, the, the Keep Knitting Kitten Cal is hosted by, co-hosted along with Becky of, um, uh, who is Soprano Knits on Instagram and the host of Stringing It Together. Uh, two awesome podcasts, um, Hannah from Corner of Craft, two of my favorite new podcasts that I started watching, uh, so you definitely should check them out. Uh, but yeah, they're hosting a Stephen West knit along uh, called the Keep Knitting Kitten Cal, and you should join in. You should join in because it's a lot, a lot of fun. And uh, they did say that they were awarding prizes to the most Stephen S. Uh, photo, project photo to go along with it. So I might have a little bit of fun with that uh, when, when I finish this. So stay tuned. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Next up, uh, we have my scarfy thing, which is a pattern by Beata Jezek, who is the dyer, the wonderful dyer behind Hedgehog Fibers. Um, and I cast this on because I was totally inspired to by Christy Glass Knits of, yeah, just Christy Glass of Christy Glass Knits, another awesome 
YouTube pod channel you should check out. She knit one and I was like, I want one too, so I cast it on. I didn't make a huge amount of progress on it, but it's just one of those um, projects that I've just been picking up here and there. Uh, kind of like a sock and it's just so relaxing and fun to knit. Um, so yeah, I'm just, it's kind of like, a, I would almost liken it to the Cozy Memories blanket. It's kind of like a mitered, um, you know, you just add on different rectangles. You have a lot of stitches on holders on, um, you know, scrap yarn and you just add on as you as you want. It's the, the pattern is free, so it's kind of like a it's a it's a recipe basically for a scarf thing. You can go in any direction you want. Um I'm kind of following along with the with the pattern, so yeah, I really really enjoy the way this is knitting up. Um and again, the yarn that I'm using is uh the speckled one right here is Hedgehog Fibers in Daydream, and then here I'm using my hand-dyed yarn in Poe, and these are on singles, merino uh fingering weight singles and then i'm just kind of incorporating some uh neon neon tastic scrap yarn that i have uh this is a one of a newish colorway that i have uh, called scream it's bright neon this is fuzzy navel my hand dyed yarn here we have hush which is leftover yarn from hedgehog fibers and what else did i do this is my uh violet star galactica colorway and they're gonna be tassels I finally cast on, uh, I, I mentioned a couple of episodes ago that I'm co-hosting another knit along with uh, Ellie from the, um, goodness, oh, Skein to Your Knits podcast. I'm sorry, I blanked there for a minute. Uh, but we are we are knitting the Damiaka Lopa uh, cardigan by Pinay Guri, who I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, but it's, it's a beautiful color work uh, cardigan uh, with, with steaking involved, uh, but it just has like this beautiful colorful uh, yoke. of this gorgeous colored yoke, and then if you can imagine just a solid color with little polka dots uh, spaced evenly throughout for the rest of the body. Um, it, it's like that. I'll try and insert a photo of it here. But uh, yeah, I, I finally cast it on. I knit a swatch. Everything worked out. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's cast on. It's cast on, you guys. Uh, and yeah, I'm using Jameson Spindrift. Uh, and I can, I don't know if I can name all the colorways, but uh, the main, like the main body of the cardigan is going to be black, and then I'm going to use uh, this really light heathered gray for the uh, the specks or the fleas or the lice, <laughs> whatever they're called. Uh, and then, yeah, I just have uh, this stripe of gray in there, and then I also incorporated, I think it's called sea glass. I'm not sure of the colorway, but it's. I started to incorporate this. Um, and then uh, a lot of you, oh yeah, and then I'm gonna have this colorway in there. You can see, and then cyclamen, cyclamen, or cyclamen, which a lot of you, many of you have uh, contacted me to let me know that it is a flower. It is a flower, and yes, thank you so much for letting me know. Uh, but I love, love this mauve. Mauve. There has to be mauve. And I think I can actually qualify this into the mauve along, which another po another uh, knit along that I'm co-hosting with uh, Shauna from Adelaide Cottage, the Adelaide Cottage podcast, which you should check out. Um, but yeah, we are co-hosting a mauve along, uh, which I don't know if you can see in the background, but my uh, my wheel is housing my, mauve, my main mauve along project, which is a loop bump incorporating lots of shades of mauve in it. So uh, very, very excited about that. Unfortunately, I did not get any work done on my wheel this past week, so I'm not gonna show it off this week, but hopefully this weekend I will have some more, I will get some spinning time in and have some more of it to show you on next week's episode. So yay, but yay, mauve. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I am knitting on high Hiya Sharps. There comes a time when you podcast and you realize you've been doing the whole thing wrong the entire time. Well, I forgot to switch needle sizes. <laughs> Whoops. Um, yeah, I was supposed to switch to a larger needle size uh, throughout well, after knitting the the ribbed collar of the cardigan, and apparently I didn't do that. I thought I did. I thought I did. But why didn't I? What is going on? It's okay. It's okay. I can rip back. I didn't go get that far into it, but something was telling me like why is my oh, oh my goodness. All right. But uh yeah, so I'm glad to have that cast on finally. I made a mistake. No big deal. I'll rip back and just start from the ribbing and then cast and switch to my larger needle size, which is supposed to be a US size 2.5. 
and I'm totally blanking on what that is in millimeters. Um, but yeah, I was knitting with the smallest needle size, which is a 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needle. So, uh, yeah, anyway, moving along, uh, hopefully I will have something better to show you next week. But anyway, moving along, uh, I do have a new project that I'm working on. Okay, so this is a new cast on, uh, but Dennis and I had just found out that some friends of ours, some very close friends of ours, are going to have a baby! So we are very excited for them, uh, and yeah, she is not watching this podcast, so I'm totally fine sharing it with you. But uh, yeah, she was one of my bridesmaids at our wedding and uh, <laughs> she made it very clear she does not have a crafty bone in her body, so don't ask her to do any crafty things for the wedding. Anyway, but uh, regardless, she is incredibly knit worthy. She was an awesome bridesmaid. Um, and has just been a really good friend of ours. You know, the, the two of them, her and her husband, have been our friends for a really long time. And uh, yeah, I wanna I wanna knit something for her. Um, I actually knit, I designed a shawl for her. Um, my, what was the pattern? Uh, Preppy Twisted. The, uh, it's a pattern that I have for sale on Ravelry. It's not in my online shop, but it is on Ravelry for sale. Um, I designed it specifically for her uh, because she had asked me to knit her something. I was like, yes, and she appreciated it, so. I'm totally happy knitting knitting something for her. Um, and yeah, she's she's just been like, yeah, anyway, they are awesome. We love them. So I decided to knit her and her husband a, and their baby to be a, a, a baby blanket. So I naturally had gravitated towards um, Brooklyn Tweed. He has the Tweed Baby Blanket, uh, which calls for um, worsted weight yarn and I didn't want to do and I'm not going for like Shetland wool or anything I'm going with something easy to wash because again she's not a knitter and she seems like the type that is just going to want to chuck something in the wash and call it a day so I went with Knit Picks, Knit Picks Swish which is 100% superwash merino uh, worsted weight yarn and um, they don't they don't want to know the sex of the baby until it um, he or she is born so um, what am I left with but uh, to go with neutral colorways and <laughs> so I'm going with gray uh, and this is uh, Knit Picks uh, Dove Heather which I believe is one of their lighter grays, lighter heather, heather grays and because I don't know the sex of the baby uh, and I kind of want to keep this a surprise for, for them uh, I went with uh, with her college colorways or her college colors <laughs> so she, she has a lot of college pride so I know she you know I just decided to go with that, um, and I know she probably doesn't want me to mention what college she went to on the podcast, but, uh, you know, I went with, uh, red, red, and this is Knit Picks, uh, again, Swish Worsted in Garnet Heather, and then for, just to add another contrast, I went with, um, Marble Heather, so I think this will go really lovely, it'll just make a nice neutral baby blanket um, that, you know, she can use and I hope they like it. So, uh, yeah, I've just been, uh, their ba I want to give it to them on their baby shower, which isn't until July, so the end of July. So we still have time. I have plenty of time. Uh, and it seems like a fairly simple, quick, well, relatively quick knit uh, with not much, um, you know, too much technique involved other than, you know, picking up stitches and knitting a giant garter square and lace and a lace border. So, yeah, um, and of course my needle of choice is High High Sharps, no surprise there, but I did order um, some US 9's 5mm uh, needles. Garter, we're still in garter, garter stitch land here, so uh, but yeah, looking forward to getting that off the needles so I can give them to their, give, give them the blanket, so uh, yes, anyway, um, so yeah, anyway. Yay! Um, and I'm trying to think what else is on the needles. I think that is it for this week as far as works in progress. Uh, I don't have any sewing to share with you this week, although although I do have some patterns that I purchased because I caught another sale on McCall's. Uh, and some of you were, uh, I think, asking, you know, how do I know when a sale is going on? Because uh, both McCall's, Butterick, uh, Vogue and Quick Sew, they are all under the same umbrella. So if you go to that, their one site, you can cross shop between other sites. Uh, so like, let's say you go to McCall's, uh, you can also shop on Butterick and Vogue and Quick Sew, add stuff to your cart and they'll all go to the same cart. So, um, but one shop might be having a sale and the other one might not. And the way I find out is I just happen to be on the website looking for a pattern and I'll find out one of those one of those sites is having a sale and then I just go willy-nilly crazy uh, shopping for patterns on there, which is not always the best, but you know, hey, why not? Um, 
so yeah, you, I think you can also sign up for their newsletters and you will get emailed every time there's a, there's a sale. So anyway, uh, without further ado, uh, let me show you what patterns I got. Uh, this one totally spoke to me. I had just purchased some crepe fabric and I have no idea what to do with it, but I saw this and I was like, this is so me. I could use more of these in my wardrobe. Um, so yeah, here's one. I want to totally make this version. But you can get like a whole bunch of, they give you like so many different versions of like, it's just a simple tunic. Um, but yeah, I really want to make this. So this might be a project for the weekend. Uh, and then also tote bag, tote bag. Love it. Can never have too many tote bags. This is like a fun t-shirt to do. Uh, I could definitely use more t- I love like long t-shirts, like long tunic size t-shirts because I can just chuck them over leggings and call it a day. Uh, and then a skirt. I got a skirt. This one seems fairly simple to construct. Uh, it seems a little frou-frou for me, but I would obviously make either this one or this one. This one I would probably wear leggings under. This one I could probably get away for summer. Um, you know, because if I'm- it's just me. I like my skirts a little bit longer if I'm not wearing leggings. Uh, I don't know. Personal preference, but yeah, uh, I think it'll be a really fun pattern to construct. Uh, and then of course the main purpose I went- well, let me show you this one because this is also McCall's. Um, kind of like a maxi, like different variations of maxi dresses. Uh, I am not a maxi dress wearing person, so to speak, uh, but I did like this version right here. This seems like a fun kind of summer dress to wear, whip up, uh, but yeah. This totally not my style at all, but I did just like, I did get it for either the D version, maybe make it a little bit shorter, um, and this one. So I will probably making one or both of those. Um, but the reason why I went on to the, uh, onto, I went on to Butterick first because I really wanted to get this pattern by Gertie and it's been sold out for a little bit. So, uh, but they finally got it in stock. This was not on sale. Um, I think it retailed for $12 US. Uh, so I, I added it to my cart and then I just decided to see what else was happening on the other sites. And lo and behold, there was a sale. So I, I loaded up on those. This is so so cute. It's so simple, but so pretty and feminine. And yeah, I, I'm going to be making this version. So love it. Um, so yeah, cannot wait to make those. Uh, I still have to make my hoodie. I have all the pattern pieces cut out. I have the fabric and I need to revisit that pattern because the first time around with that one was a total disaster, but, um, yay. I have my summer, my summer, uh, sewing plans all cut out for me. So pun totally intended. Uh, but yeah, that is not all. So in other news when it comes to sewing, uh, when I had my meetup, my knitting meetup on uh, last Sunday, we had gotten shocking about quilting. Uh, if you're not familiar, Jacqueline from the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast um, is currently hosting a quilt along uh, and she has a whole really awesome video series on YouTube, uh, you know, how to create a quilt from start to finish. She is amazing. She holds your hand the entire time, basically, uh, and shows you how to make a quilt from start to finish. And I had been wanting to hop on the bandwagon ever since she mentioned it. And just not, again, it's just like finding the time and energy and anything, everything. And um, yeah, well, just sitting down with them, chatting about it really got me wanting to give it a go. And you know, Jacqueline and Helen, they were just like, just, and even Mina, she's like, just do it. You gotta do it. Just, it's so easy. I'm like, well, when you put it that way. <laughs> so later that day, I hopped onto fabric.com and treated myself to a couple charm packs. Um, so I'm starting small. I don't want to get in head over my, you know, uh, get in over my neck or head. And how is that the term? I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. Uh, so I'm starting small. I just bought, um, I bought a charm pack, a 40 pieces of 10 by 10, um, batik fabric. I gray tone because yeah, I'm, I, I like these neutrals, you know, I don't want to go too crazy. And you know, it's going to be, if, if it's going to be my first, um, first quilt, I wanted to at least match with, with everything. So I, I don't know, I fell in love with this. And this is Tonga Treats, uh, Timeless Treasures in what color? I don't know. I don't even know. On the website, it said Gotham something. And that name totally spoke to me. No surprise there. So, um, I looked it up online and they said, if you buy one of these, you can probably get a good, uh, twin size quilt out of this. So I ordered back, I ordered batting for it. Um, and then I'm also, for the backing, I am going to be getting a regular sheet because Jacqueline said that you can actually just get a plain white sheet or whatever sheet from, you know, wherever, a cheap flat sheet. 
and I use that as the backing for the quilt. So I thought that was a brilliant idea. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to get started. I actually did watch uh, some of her tutorial and she makes it super, she explains everything so well and makes it seem very easy. So I think I'm gonna get a start on this this weekend, maybe today, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but then, but then wait, I also, I went on to Amazon and I did not know that they actually sell, I was looking for uh, rotary blades replacements because I do have a rotary cutter. I just needed a replacement for my current one, a replacement blade. And lo and behold, I didn't realize that they sell charm packs as well and actually kind of cheaper than uh, fabric.com. Uh, so I saw that they had um, five, they had a, 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 this charm pack too, uh, five pre-cut squares and uh, I looked it up online and you can actually make a baby quilt out of this. Um, so I'm thinking, practice with this. This was only I think like $11 on Amazon and yeah, it comes with, so again, it's a uh, five inch pre-cut squares and it comes with 42 pieces and you can make a baby blanket with it. Um, so I'm gonna start with this, I think. I got, I got batting for this as well. So I'm gonna start small and work my way up if that makes sense. So very excited. I, you know, cannot wait to get started um, and see where it goes. Uh, because yeah, I have, I, when I initially started sewing or wanted to start sewing, I had wanted to start quilting and I bought a whole quilting, I bought a Singer Quilter Confidence Machine and didn't let, I didn't test it. That was, you know, a risk I took. I bought it online and I just like, oh, well, it says quilter on it. I might as well just use it to quilt things. It turned out to be a wonky machine and I didn't like using it. It has since been de-stashed and um, I really love my machine, my Janome 2212. I've used it for everything, for sewing garments and you can even use it for quilting as well. So um, yeah, anyway, happy to be revisiting, revisiting quilting uh, and cannot wait to get started. Uh, but definitely check out if you are curious about or thinking about getting into quilting, definitely check out Jacqueline's tutorial. It is awesome um, and yeah, so anyway. That is sewing this week. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, as I mentioned, I don't have any new garments to share with you, but I have new patterns, so that's probably foretelling of next week. <laughs> Hopefully I will have something to show you next week for the sewing segment, um, other than what I bought. Uh, so that said, I'm gonna mosey along into shop update because I'm having a shop update tomorrow, Friday, uh, June 9th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope you can make it. Uh, but yeah, let me go get uh, the colorways that will be in the shop tomorrow. So as I mentioned last week, uh, Kelsey from Primrose Yarn Company and I, uh, Bull and Vine Yarns, uh, joined forces uh, and did a little collaboration together. Uh, we both decided it would be fun to just have fun with neons and speckles and uh, you know see what we come up with. And you guys, we had so much fun coming up with these. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. But yeah, they went on sale June 5th and we actually dyed quite a bit of these. So there's still some in the shop. Uh, this is my colorway uh, Reef Madness. Yeah, I totally know it's a reference to Reefer Madness, that 1920s film, but totally unrelated. I just love the, the play on words. Uh, and this is her colorway uh, Hysteric. And yeah, here's her logo. So yeah, these are being sold currently as a set. So if you guys would like them, they're still in the shop. Uh, so hop on over there and check them out. Um, so there's that. And then I will have this week, I will have some more tea leaves. So as usual, I will have all these dyed on, uh, here it is on Footsie, and here it is on my Nouveau base. So Footsie is a uh, Superwash Blue Face Luster and Nylon. Uh, and Footsie, of course, I mean, and uh, Nouveau is 100% uh, Superwash Merino singles, uh, fingering. And then I will have some Lady of the Lake. Brought that this back this week. So that here it is on Blitz, my gold Selena base, and then here it is on Volca, my superwash uh, Marina and Island cashmere. And then I will have some hot mess, which I dyed up yesterday. There you go. Here is on Volca, and here it is on Blitz at the bottom. And then we will have Goth Day cake. Here it is on Nouveau, and here it is on Footsie. And then, yeah, so I also just dyed this morning some more Paranormal, so that will be in the shop. Um, I'm gonna see if I can dye any more either today or tomorrow, but we'll see. 
but yeah it's i hope you guys can make the shop update again it's going to be tomorrow june 9th at 7 p.m eastern time uh but just a heads up because i am doing the trunk show June uh, 24th, uh, I will be taking a two week hiatus from updating my shop just to build inventory. Uh, so thank you so much in advance for your patience, but uh, whatever does not sell at the trunk show will go into the shop that following Monday. Um, I will keep you posted on times, but uh, just to give you guys a little heads up, um, yeah, there will be no shop update for about two weeks uh until after the trunk show uh but yeah i'm, I'm again i'm super excited for the trunk show uh, i cannot tell you guys uh so again if you can make it i would be so lovely to meet you in person uh and and yes so okay that said i'm gonna belong to blather and welcome to the blather segment a segment in which i talk about what's been going on in my life should you care to stick around and find out um but yeah just basic life stuff uh and yeah this past monday was dennis and um uh, it was our uh sixth anniversary we've been married six years yay we made it um so uh but yeah we've been married six years and our anniversary fell on a monday thank you so much to everybody uh for all your happy anniversary wishes they were so it was just so awesome to um yeah just get those messages and it means so much so thank you so much uh yeah and it, again it fell on a monday and obviously monday's a school day one of the biggest school days of the week <laughs> and dennis had to work late and then he also had to study for his exam today uh so we decided to call it and just say we're, you know what we'll celebrate the following weekend so we're celebrating uh, on Saturday, we're gonna go out, have a nice night out. Um, nothing, nothing too fancy, but something a little fancy, if you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're gonna celebrate on Saturday. Uh, but the cool thing was, you know, totally unexpected. Uh, Dennis said that he was, you know, going to pick up takeout on his way home. And anyway, long story short, Dennis said he had ordered takeout and delivery should be there soon. So normally um, he gets the call when delivery is waiting outside. And so he texted me, he's like, oh, there's a delivery outside. Me thinking it was food. <laughs> I opened the door and flowers, they were flowers. He got me flowers, totally unexpected. But um, I, was, I was very surprised and they are in the back. I don't know if you can see, but yes, some beautiful flowers. I love them, I love them so much. And they've lasted all week. So double plus, double bonus. Um, so yeah, that was really nice, but but wait, you guys, that is not all. Uh, he came home with, with delivery in hand, and I was like, yay, food's here. He goes, oh, but that's not Indian food. I'm like, what is it? He's like, it's Eastwick. I was like, my, my jaw just dropped open. If, if you're not, you're probably not familiar. Jacqueline will get this. Eric from Sticks Plus Twine will get this. Allison from Prosa will get this, <laughs> because uh, Eastwick is one of our favorite places to eat it's my favorite place to eat dennis i will admit not so much he's he likes a little bit more variety but anytime i have choice of like where i want to go to eat it's always eastwick because the food the food it's so good um so yeah i was just so happy and excited that he brought home eastwick takeout yeah so uh you know we munched on that but the, the burrata it was all in the burrata which is um I cannot, I cannot wax poetic enough about burrata. It's, if you can imagine, it's mozzarella cheese. It's like it. It's like a giant ball of mozzarella cheese, but the inside is just so gooey. And the way that they flavor it, it's just like they smear. It's like they almost marinate it in pesto. And then they have peaches and, or like, can, I don't know. They, they must use canned peaches, but it just goes so well with it. So if you can imagine pesto, canned peaches and tomatoes and it, it did the, it, and croutons, soggy croutons. It's just so good. Ah, anyway, for takeout, it was awesome. So anyway, I know I'm getting all mushy gushy here on, on food, but um, yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. So um, yeah, so we ate, we watched some TV together and then he went up to study and I went to knit. Um, and yeah, so like I said, it was, it was for what it was, it was an awesome anniversary night. Um, and yeah, we will celebrate appropriately <laughs> this weekend. Um, we'll go out, we'll have a good night. Um, uh, but yeah, otherwise, uh, I'm trying to think what else has been going on. Uh, I've been watching The Handmaid's Tale. Oh my gosh, you guys. My newest favorite series, I can't even, it's it's awesome. I just finished listening to the audiobook this morning while I was dying yarn. And I will say, the I really like what they're doing with the series, uh, the, the TV series, as opposed to the book. The book was kind of, I, I feel like, 
more well again this is what usually happens um the bush the, the bush the book kind of just rushes through everything everything that's already happened in the series so i'm kind of curious to see how the the tv series drags everything out and how they evolve or um do a spin on the events that happen in the book and i will admit like the the ending of the book i wasn't too I feel like she just kind of ended it, Margaret Atwood, the author. Um, I feel like she just kind of ended it. It just ended. I mean, it r wrapped it up in a nice little package, but it just ended and ended to end. Wasn't too pleased with it, but anyway, um, I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I finished it. Uh, and yeah, you should totally check out the series. It's awesome. Again, L Elizabeth Moss is in it from Mad Men. And Alexis Bedell from Gilmore Girls fame is in it, so check it out. I highly recommend it. Again, not for children. Uh, it is kind of a dystopian sci-fi, uh, lots of sexual content in it, so maybe not for, for wee ones, if, if you know what I mean. Um, and yeah, so, but otherwise I recommend it um, if you are into that kind of thing. Uh, and I have also started rewatching uh, Twin Peaks the original like the first season i've already made it through the first season and now i've started the second season and oh my gosh you guys i love the series so much it is awesome um yeah i definitely need i need to have it on dvd because it is that awesome i love it um kind of mclaughlin's in it he's currently in i believe portlandia <laughs> he plays the mayor of portland oregon uh which is another i know jumping tangents here but if you are into comedy and sketch comedy uh check out portlandia it kind of makes fun of like the whole hipster uh hipster culture if you know what i mean um and they do a really good job kind of mocking it uh but yeah he plays the mayor of portland it's hilarious but he plays the same type of character as, as he does in that show as he does in twin peaks so yeah it's it's a mystery sci-fi i wouldn't even call it sci-fi but like so much weird stuff happens in the show like funny weird but in a good way like weird in a good way like i don't know if you can qualify it as sci-fi but yeah it's a mystery thriller and a lot of you know a murder happens and then the investigation around the murder you know again not for children but it is entertaining um so yeah anyway that is it um as far as like what i've been reading watching doing otherwise it's just been dying 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 yarn and yeah i'm hoping to get i, I may just take tomorrow off because I know I'm going to go in deep dye mode in preparation for the trunk show. I, I'm going to be a busy lady, so I might as well just take a breather, uh, do some crafting, and store up my energy. But uh, yeah, so but otherwise, I think that is it for this week. Um, I do want to mention that a couple weeks ago, my in-laws, uh, Carol and Ron, hi guys, I know you're watching. So a couple weeks, they came into town, uh, and we had gone to the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, and I did take some photos and video uh, which I had wanted to include in some previous episodes, but for some reason totally forgot. Uh, I will do that this week So in case you are in need or craving a moment of nature stay tuned for the end of the podcast uh, Where I will incorporate some beautiful photos of flowers because who doesn't love a flower? Uh, so yeah, anyway uh, If you enjoyed this podcast, thank you so much for watching as always uh, But if you enjoyed please like and subscribe below if you're watching on YouTube uh, if you're watching on iTunes uh, please subscribe there and you leave me a glowing review. Um, anyway, I always forget to mention that on the podcast, so, you know, but just dropping it in there now. Um, anyway, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye.